Hello, Gemini. Welcome to your soul session for January. We're going to go ahead and jump. Okay. Literally jump into you guys' uh, cards to see what's going on with you guys in the month of January. So starting out with our theme, hopefully my lighting and camera work with me, please. Okay. Maybe not. Let's. Okay. Oh, okay. Hallelujah. All right. We have the Ace of Swords coming in as you guys theme for the month. So, okay. And your challenge that just hopped out. We have the mm, Six of Wands in the reverse. So what it's looking like, Gemini, coming into the month of January as well as 2024 is that you guys are going to come into the month with a bit of clarity, um, a mental breakthrough, if we could say it that way. But I do feel like this is going to be something that you guys are kind of uh, playing out throughout um, the remainder of the month. It doesn't necessarily feel to me... It doesn't necessarily feel to me like you're going to come into the month and suddenly have like this huge aha, everything in life is going to make sense and you're just going to know, you know, <laughs> what to do. It doesn't feel to me like that. I feel this is more or less going to end up coming in through, mm, I'm going to say less than stellar means. And I'm saying that looking at this challenge being the six of wands in the reverse is more or less... Um, the challenge for you guys in the month of January and <laughs> beginning 2024 is for you to look at something that may seem like a letdown or a disappointment or something that you really wanted, something that you may have felt extremely confident was like in the bag or something that you just knew without the shadow of a doubt was yours or you knew was going to work out. It's more or less seeing that as, um, what is that? Colloquialism. Uh, like when people say your, your rejection is your protection, not necessarily saying that that's specifically what's happening for you guys, that y'all are going to be rejected in some way, shape, form or fashion. But I feel like the main theme and challenge is for you to see things from a different perspective. So it's like, if something doesn't work out, like if you really, really wanted a particular job and you don't get it, instead of you seeing it as a reflection of like failure or not being good enough or, um, you know, this is what life is trying to tell me about me, as opposed to seeing it that way. It's just seeing it from the perspective of like, oh, well, you know, it just wasn't for me. If it was really meant for me to have that job, I would have gotten it. So it doesn't mean that I'm never going to get a job or I'm not going to find, you know, something better. It's more or less having, um, if we were to look at the Ace of Swords in the perspective of how I see all of the swords, um, the whole suit in tarot, is that there's a light side of the sword and a dark side of the sword, right? So we can, and the sword being our mind. <laughs> so in our mind, we can perceive other people's actions, um, things that are just simply happening in the world or around us or before us. We have the choice to utilize our perception or our perspective rather to see it either, um, what is the thing I, I used to always say? Uh, asking yourself the question, do you believe that life is happening to you or do you believe life is happening for you? It's more or less those two perspectives. Now for this to come up, right? It would say to me that um, coming into this realm of reality, that the perspective that Gemini has had about a lot of encounters, it's been seeing things from the dark side of the sword. So um what that would look like is more or less believing that life is happening to you as opposed to for you. So it's a series of unfortunate events. People are doing things to you. They're talking about you. Stuff isn't working out, you know, for you and things of the sort. And this is more or less like a call for you to change sides. So, and how I can go even deeper into this is look at your life throughout the course of 2023, right? And if your perspective on things was, um, you know, life is happening to me and you've had like um, a less than stellar or a negative um, perspective on, you know, people, stuff, things, happenings, what have you, and looking at where it is that you are now, has that worked for you? Is that giving you um, 
like a drive? Is that uh, inspiring you? I mean, if it is, then keep it up, <laughs> right? But if not, it's more or less like a, a, a challenge to you of like, what could it hurt to shift that perspective if that prior perspective of seeing, you know, the glasses half empty, if that isn't working for you, you know what I'm saying? So coming into this month, I feel that there are a lot of the things that you guys encounter are going to centralize around these things. It's a matter of how it is that you're perceiving things, because my sneaky suspicion is that um, your disempowered state exists in you seeing things from a pessimistic or glass less full type of perspective. And I feel that your power lies in you being able to find the positive or the good in um, situations. You know what I'm saying? Even if they're not necessarily in your favor, right? And that kind of reminds me a bit going back to um, Capricorn, which I've been telling everyone, <laughs> uh, the Capricorn reading I did first because we're in Capricorn season and uh, in January, we're coming off of the heel of Mercury being um, in retrograde in Capricorn, right? So the Capricorn energy is heavily influencing us, you know? So um, the way I've always done these is, you know, the first sign that I do is always the season that we're in. So it doesn't hurt even if you don't have Capricorn in your chart prominently um, to watch that one. So that way you're able to kind of get, um, you're looking at it almost like a general because it's giving you insights into how these energies are going to be influencing all of us. And I feel specifically for you guys, Jim and I, uh, it would be helpful because I go into great detail in Capricorn's reading about uh, perspective and like how it is that we're approaching different things and, you know, like sensory consciousness and higher consciousness and how those perspectives can change like our day to day experience. Because uh, what I'm picking up intuitively with this is this is like an attachment that you guys have. It's like a limiting uh, belief that's creating a perception on life or a worldview, if you will. And I feel this has kind of been the thing that's been holding you back up to this point. But we'll get more into that as we jump into these cards because you guys have um, a hidden influence card. So your central energy representing you for January. Interesting more mental mind stuff. Okay. Wait, we, we almost had it. Hold on a second. Wait, wait, wait. Dang it, son of a gun. Let me move my face. Dang it. Wait. Okay. This is really hard to do y'all because my camera is like backwards from how, okay, there we go. Queen of swords. My camera is like backwards. It's like mirrored. So it's like, I'm like, am I left or right? Okay. Anyway. So the energy representing you guys in January is the Queen of Swords. I feel like this is perfect with you guys being an air sign. I always say with the Queen of Swords, and it's interesting, court cards are coming out of Central Energy. But anyway, I always say with the Queen of Swords, it's the thought of, has your past made you bitter or better? You know what I'm saying? So everything that it is that you've been through, I feel like the Queen of Swords is the, the perfect depiction, illustration, embodiment of what balance looks like, right? It's like when you go through a whole bunch of stuff in your past, right? And it's made you better. It means you have a sense of balance. So just like with her, how she's waving someone to her, but she's holding the sword, she's only going to use it if necessary. So it's come to me because I'm going to hear you out, right? So people have screwed me over. I'm not just going to wield the sword and be like, stay the hell away from me or else I'm going to, you know, poke you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, what, oh my gosh, it just made me think about in, in Britain, they call it wedding someone when you jab them, you know, but anyway, <laughs> but anywho, but you're not just like wielding the sword and like, stay away from me or else I'm going to jab you. You know what I'm saying? And then you're not on the other side of the Likert scale where you're like, wow, I have no boundaries. Come to me. I don't need this sword. Let me just lay it down. Like, come talk to me. Give me a hug. Right. You know what I'm saying? She's the embodiment of balance of I'm going to hear you out. But if this isn't in alignment with me, then I'm going to utilize, you know, my proverbial sword, if you will. You know what I'm saying? So I feel that with this showing up upright, it's saying that this energy is here. Like this is you guys, right? It's a call for transformation for you guys this month to fully embody um, this particular energy. And I feel in some sense or another, you guys may have been uh, working on this up to this point, but I feel that 
there's more or less like a test, right? And of course, we know tests, like when spirit tests us, I said this in detail in one of your readings, Gemini, before I quit YouTube. <laughs> um, when I, I was like, I used Adam and Eve as like an analogy. And I was talking about uh, like when there's tests in life and that spirit has no reason to test us to learn something about us because spirit knows all that there is to know about us. So if spirit isn't testing us <laughs> to learn something about us, because spirit knows everything, right? Then who is the test really for, right? And the test is for us, is for us to see where it is that we are so that we can course correct, right? And we have the free will to course correct or not. And I feel like that's what the month of January is for you guys. And I feel your challenge is speaking to that. So the big igniting factor, the big, you know, hoo-ha for you guys this month is something where you're either getting passed up or overlooked, you're not getting acknowledged, or it's something that you wanted to succeed at or be recognized for. It's something that you wanted to achieve that doesn't quite work out the way that you hoped. And the test is like mentally, what are you going to do with that? Are you going to beat yourself up? You know what I'm saying? Or are you just going to say, you know, hey, just wasn't for me, you know? Now, looking at the card that's representing your, oh, sweet Jesus, <laughs> your recent past coming out of the latter part of December or 2023 um, into January, we have the Seven of Swords. And you guys know I always say with the Seven of Swords, what you skip will trip you up later. Now, in um, your conscious mental energy, we have the three of swords in the reverse and your hidden influences, sweet mother of goodness. We have Aquarius energy with the star in the reverse and then going forward into the latter part of January. Oh my goodness, Gemini. We have the nine of wands. So, I mean, I get it. So here's the dealio, Gemini. So coming out of, of um, <laughs> coming out of, um, 2023 slash December um, into January slash 2024. I, <laughs> it feels to me like you guys, um, you kind of got out of dodge with something. Um, and this is one of those things where I say that like we can't skip lessons, right? In order for us to transcend a particular timeline that we're on and like learn a lesson, it's like we have to go through like four checkpoints, right? So, you know, I always talk about the Likert scale, right? You're going to start on one side, you're going to go to the other. When you go to the other, it's always going to be like a mirroring effect that happens, right? So much like how I was saying with you guys, it's having absolutely no boundaries whatsoever. And then you get your feelings hurt. So what do you do? You go to the other side of the Likert scale, which is where you have 10 foot electric fence boundaries, right? Like I was saying with the queen of swords, right? That is not the goal <laughs> because that is not who you are, right? Like having, you know, super, super high boundaries that's unbalanced. That's not who you are. Having absolutely no boundaries whatsoever is not who you are either, right? But because we live in a didactic realm on planet Earth, our assumption, right, is that somehow we're going to get to zero point that of which is balanced, like, I don't know, by osmosis or something. We're just going to somehow haphazardly end up there. But the only thing that we keep doing is bouncing from one side of the Likert scale to the other, right? Now, what has to happen, right, is we have to ultimately realize that both of those don't work. That's when the middle road opens up, right? And you still don't ascend at that point. You have to descend, right, into shadow aspects. You have to face the truth about how it is that we ended up here in the first place, why it is that we had zero boundaries, how it is that us having 10-foot boundaries was just a defense mechanism for the fact that we had none, and we had none because of whatever this deep-seated thing is that we've been trying to run away from, right? realizing that both of these are two sides of one coin and therefore useless, right? Once we get that insight, then after we've descended, we can ascend, right? Now we can look back at them and we see this in transit and then we therefore ascend and then transcend said timeline, meaning full circle lesson is learned. You feel what I'm saying? So there's no other way around that. 
what this says to me with the seven of swords being here and why it is, I say, what you skip will trip you up later. Why I always say that with the seven of swords is because let's just look at the illustration here. Home dude has five swords that he's holding by the blades, which is asinine, right? What did he leave behind? Two swords. What are two swords? Crossroads and conflict decisions that need to be made. You know what I'm saying? So the seven of swords is merely you vacating from one side of the Likert scale to the other side and then pretending as if none of that ever happened, <laughs> right? But while you're over here, you know what I'm saying, with your 10 foot electric fence boundaries and not saying we're specifically talking about boundaries. I'm just using this as an illustration. It's like you're over here and you're hurting yourself in the process because you've moved so far from the truth of who you are and deluded yourself into believing that there's nothing else to learn. And this is how you're supposed to show up in life. You feel what I'm saying? So that's the energy that's being bought into 2024. The call <laughs> with this Queen of Swords being here, you feel what I'm saying, is for you to be a balanced version of yourself, right? That's 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 in you already. Like I said, why I feel like that's showing up in the upright, you know what I'm saying, is because that's in you. That's just something that needs to be cultivated and tapped into. But the work that needs to be done is what we're finding in this Three of Swords in the reverse as well as the star in the reverse, the three of swords in the reverse that's in your conscious energy. It's letting me know that your desire, and I don't know what it is that happened, but you guys got hurt by something. You know what I'm saying? And you're wanting to get over that. I feel like some of you may be telling yourself <laughs> that you're already over it, but you're not. But the whole thing is, I feel like you vacated into your mental space. Because I always say with the three of swords, that's the mind attacking the heart. You know what I'm saying? The call would be for you guys, again, to find a balance between the two, because the two are supposed to work in concert with each other. When you're unwoke, <laughs> right, your mind is in control and the heart's just sitting up there chilling, right? When you're woke, <laughs> it's like your heart and your mind are working in concert with each other, right? When you're in sensory consciousness, right, you completely shut down your heart space and you're solely working out of mental space. And I feel like you guys are at that transcendence point to where you were super open hearted. That got your heart broken. You got disappointed. And this may not even be speaking in a sense of like when I say heartbroken, not in the context of like romantic, but heartbroken in the sense of trusting a friend and then betraying your trust or you know, being a person who manifests where you're visualizing this, you know, life and what it is that you want to draw into your reality. And you waking up one day and realizing that, you know, all of these high lofty dreams that I've had, they've never come to pass. And I need to start being more practical and realistic about things like if these dreams, you know what I'm saying? And that's what brings me to the star in the reverse, which is pretty much speaking to having lost faith or hope. You know what I'm saying? So what I'm seeing here, um, Gemini, this is looking like a recipe for cynicism for me, where the Geminis who would resonate with this is you've been through some things in your life. You've been disappointed, right? And I feel like you guys are kind of in survival mode, hence this nine of wands here. And the thing that you need to be aware of is when we're in survival mode, because I always say with the nine of wands, it's my PTSD card. What, and if we were to talk about trauma, <laughs> the simple definition of trauma is when you are introduced to a new reality. So you, once upon a time before being traumatized, you did not know that there was a way of being or a way of life that existed, right, with, you know, a traumatic thing having happened to you. So when a traumatic thing happens, we're introduced to a new reality in which said traumatic thing can happen to us, <laughs> which within itself is traumatizing. You feel what I'm saying? So it causes you to be in survival mode. It causes you to be hyper vigilant to where you're consistently looking over your shoulder. And I'm not even speaking about this in the context of like trauma, trauma, like how a person would, you know, uh, typically categorize trauma. I mean, something like a friend stabbing you in the back, right? Not literally, <laughs> right? I mean, that is traumatizing within itself, but proverbially speaking, that within itself can be traumatizing. 
And a lot of times what we do going all the way to the other side of the Likert scale is cutting off being friends with people because we don't want to experience that again. But what that ends up becoming in transit is a limiting belief. So now one friend becomes all friends. So now you're cutting yourself off from a life source and you're becoming unbalanced, right? And then when we manipulate life like that, because that's really what it is, when we have like a whole pile of limiting beliefs where we've changed our behaviors in accordance with these limiting beliefs, right? So we're not fluid with how we're engaging with people or engaging in life. We're thus manipulating life. That's what the Seven of Swords is speaking to. So you're manipulating your experience. You're not really having real experiences. How it is that people are engaging with you, they're engaging with you based on how you have orchestrated your space for people to engage with you. You know what I'm saying? So it's not like a real fluid kind of interaction. So it's like it's living in a false reality. Now, when we get back to what I was saying of how it doesn't have to be a romantical thing and it literally could be you wanting to manifest certain things into your life and you're wondering why things aren't manifesting into your space, it's because, and I said this with another sign, I talked about fragmentation. It's like you're showing up as a fragmented version of yourself and you're sending all kinds of mixed messages to the universe. So nine times out of 10, it's interesting what my guides are showing me right now, because they're literally showing me this person and they're like a light body person. And they have all of these pieces of like clay and over them. Right. But it's like the clay is like broken and fragmented and it's hovering over the person. And they're showing it to me like as like a profile. So I can see both of them. Like I see the light person I see all of the fragmented like pieces of clay that's, you know, in the shape of the person. And if I lean a little this way, I can see the little fragments of light that are coming in between, you know, the little broken pieces of clay. And it's like they're showing me like that's what's being sent out to the universe. Right. So if each of those little beams of light, there's a whole picture behind it. So say if like this section that's shaped like a square. Like this is a whole picture that's an energy vibration that's supposed to be going out to the universe to manifest it in because there's a big piece of clay that's blocking this light. It ends up being like a rectangle of light when it should be a square, right? So the only thing the universe is getting is this, <laughs> right? So that's what it's sending back. And then Gemini ends up being disappointed because it's like I'm I'm manifesting and I'm praying and I'm doing this and da 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 da, da. I'm setting my intentions and I'm not getting what it is that I want. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it's bringing you back to this place of disappointment, three of swords in the reverse. But the thing that really needs to be addressed is the star in the reverse, is that once upon a time when this proverbial friend betrayed you, you feel what I'm saying? You lost hope in humanity. And I'm being extra, but I'm saying this proverbially speaking, when that friend betrayed you once upon a time, you lost hope in humanity, you know, and that's where, you know, a piece of clay kind of came. Right. But the thing is, is deep down inside, you're still that that person who was hurt that still wants connection and friends and things of the sort. But it's like the pseudo self that you've built. Right. Right. <laughs> is what's coming in the way of what it is that you want. So it's the, an illusion of change. It's like a mask that you have on in so many words. You haven't changed on a core level as a person. It's just an armor that you're wearing. You know what I'm saying? Because deep down inside, you still want the same things, but you can't get those things because it's almost like asking for it. I'm just going to use the friend thing. I know that's going to sound hella corny, but it's like you really want friends <laughs> but your conscious mind is telling you that you don't want them. And your reason for that is because you were betrayed and like, you know, all human beings, you don't trust them. Right. But deep down inside, you still want that. But the thing is, you're no longer consciously aware that you still want that. You would never admit that to yourself, you know? So you're telling yourself that F friends, I don't care about friends. I don't want friends. And mind you, I'm saying this hypothetically because, you know, this is reflective of whatever this is that's relevant for you. You're saying that you don't want that, but deep down inside, you do. <laughs> that's why this star in the reverse here is here, because you lost hope in it. 
Like <laughs> to lose hope, you have to have hope. If this energy is showing up presently, that means that it's still there. Just like I said to you guys with the queen of swords, do I feel like you guys are that balanced queen of swords at present? No, but that energy signature is with you and it's asking you to cultivate it. So the same with the star in the reverse. You lost hope in something. That means that you had hope in it. And for this to be showing up, it's saying that that hope is still very much with you. It's just your conscious mind. You've convinced yourself that that's not a thing, you know, because whenever you're truly over something, you're in indifference. This is an indifference. Like you're on the other side of the Likert scale. When you transcend it, you're in indifference. It's like it's neither here nor there. Like I, it doesn't matter to me one way or the other. You know what I'm saying? But whenever you're standing in opposition to something, you may as well be standing for it, right? Like you can't stand against something and not also be for it. I hope that that's making sense, right? Because like to, to hate something is to love it, right? Because you can't hate it unless you loved it at one particular time. It's just that lets me know, and I'm, I'm speaking as a clinician, it's like for you to hate something you're standing in opposition to it. So that says to me at one point in time, you were for it, but there's something that happened that was disappointing. That was very six of wands to you to where you stood on the other side of it. So this thing disappointed you somehow. That's what that says to me, because if that wasn't the case, then you would be completely indifferent. And to be indifferent isn't to say like, you know, I don't really care about what they're doing anyway. Sure you don't, <laughs> right? But anywho, I'm saying all of that to say, um, Gemini, and I hope and pray that y'all are following me. I say all of this to say that what I'm seeing with this is it's your past is very much controlling your future. You feel what I'm saying? It's something that happened to you past tense that created a limiting belief that you keep seven of sorting, right? You keep dodging it. So if we go back to the friend example, there's several opportunities that you are given to overcome this limiting belief, but it requires you to proverbially be friends with someone. But anytime you get the opportunity to be friends with someone, you somehow find a way to run away from it, right? And you think that you're sidestepping it, but the only thing that you're really doing is causing yourself to repeat it all over again. Because like I said, what you skip will trip you up later. You're going to keep finding yourself back here. The whole premise of what you guys are intended to do in the month of January is to finally face the music and to admit the truth about the situation, right? Because just like I said, with this nine of wands going into your immediate future, right? Home dude is still looking at the past. He's still thinking about what it is that happened back then. So he is allowing what happened back then to prevent you from experiencing something now. And because of that, you're continuously repeating your past into the foreseeable future, like in the present moment. At the crossroads, you keep making the same decision and thus you're still repeating the same cycle all over again. So the only way out of this is to actually face it, to actually face your fear. That's how it is that you truly transform and cultivate this balance that I'm pretty sure you guys are desiring. And I don't necessarily think it's a desire for balance. It's like you want the stuff that you want right? Like the things that you're desiring in life, you want that. You want that fulfillment. You want that recognition. You want that relationship. Like you want that job. Like you want the success, whatever it is that you guys are desiring, right? You guys are wanting that, but there's only one way to get there. <laughs> and the way to get there is literally facing it head on, right? It's looking it in the eye. It's facing your fears, and no longer allowing the limiting beliefs of your past experience to determine what it is that's possible for you. Because that's the only reason why it is that a level of hope is lost, right? Or your trajectory for the future or your past desires and dreams have been sidestepped in some way is because what you've experienced, you've allowed that to be your God. You've allowed that to be your future vision. You've allowed that to be the thing that tells you what's possible in life. And that's just not the case. And that's why it is you guys haven't got what it is that you are desiring up until this particular point. So anywho, I hope and pray that that makes sense, Gemini. <laughs> that has been uh, your soul session for uh, January. I'll be back at you know the midpoint of the month to read for you guys again. And I mean, if you want more of me, you can join my network, <laughs> She Do Society, because I do weeklies over there. But anywho, um, other than that, I'll see you guys in uh, the next reading or I don't know. 
in a weekly. I don't know. You'll you'll see me places. Like I'm here now. But I love your freaking face. And 